huh? Look at this. Nice. It's not done. Like everything else in this van, it's not done. But it's getting there. Now, this install was done at Xantrex. Xantrex are the people that make these inverters. They're widely used. Lithionics is a Florida company that developed this battery and the, um, the BMS, the battery management system, which is incredibly intelligent. What this system does and is capable of is unbelievable. And that's all accessible from a tablet. From the tablet or app from or, or a browser. Um, yeah. What a long, strange trip it's been. Actually, it wasn't a bad trip at all. It was a great trip. I started off in Willoughby. The first part of my adventure, I took a trip to the lake again. Willoughby, Ohio. A quaint little town with an eclectic mix of restaurants, antique shops, and galleries. Willoughby, Ohio. You know what's there. The mothership, Advanced RV. I'm at Advanced RV and I'm having my new quiet air conditioner installed. This is great! Advanced RV recently moved to their new larger facilities, just down the street from the original mothership. These new facilities are simply amazing. Organized, clean and well run. The personnel from each department provided the workflow schematics and plans to ensure an efficient day-to-day -day operation. Smart! My reason for being there was to have the new Advanced RV Quiet Air Conditioner installed in Humble Bay. I have personally experienced normal conversation directly under one of these quiet air conditioners. And I can tell you it's very impressive. That's why I bought it. It's no louder than a fan. Advanced RV has installed dozens and dozens of these air conditioners. And it became obvious as I watched, they have perfected the task. So much so, that I had another one of my pea brain storms. Another thing I'm thinking, while I'm here, let them install my Max Air fans. They got all the equipment, the ladders are up, why not? Put them in, I'll wire them when I get home. So like clockwork, and in no time at all, I had one air conditioner and two Max Air fans installed in my roof. Ah! So now, I got my ceiling fans in, I got my air conditioner. So we did a little bit of testing with the air conditioner over at uh, Xantrex. So we direct wired the air conditioner in just to see Make sure the system's working, that we're pulling loads, the gauges are working. Everything worked really well. The surprise for all of us was it was a little chilly in Elkhart. So we had to set that air conditioner down to its lowest temperature, 62 degrees and a high fan. So we had that baby running at full throttle. It was only pulling 7.9 amps. And that's a 120 volt air conditioner. So that's running off the inverter. The inverter is pulling watts from this Mameluke, 120 volts up to that air conditioner. So it's quiet and it sips power at that rate because you wouldn't run it at full throttle. You know, you'd have duty cycles. You'd have it on low just to maintain a temperature. Uh, you, you might be able to run for days on a single charge with the air conditioner. It remains to be tested. As these guys began cleaning up for the day, Another department was preparing for tomorrow's project, the S-Bar Furnace. For a number of reasons, I thought it best to have certain systems installed in my van by professionals, tried and true practices that would pretty much ensure the trouble-free, safe enjoyment of those systems. I'm no expert. The S-Bar Heating System is the one we are working on here. A furnace mounted under the van sips diesel fuel from the van tank and will be responsible for heating the cabin through a hot air blower system as well as radiant heat in the floors. This system 
will also provide you hot water, instant, on demand, and limited only by your fresh water tank capacity, which in my case is 45 gallons. With the key basics done, I can customize and install the remainder of this system at home. My time in advanced RV was coming to an end. I was treated to a whole van wash, something I was not expecting. The work performed at Advanced RV was impeccable. The next morning, I drove the van to Elkhart, Indiana. I had a few days layover before my dream electrical system went in. I could think of nothing else. The best I could do was try to stay busy. But the excitement was killing me. And then the day finally came. is a system that's based off of the Freedom SW uh, 3012 inverter, uh, 3,000 watts of uh, inverted power. It's fed by a 600 amp hour lithium battery uh, going through the, the Li3 uh, BMS. The, uh, the charge to the battery comes from uh, a 280 amp alternator uh, under the hood and solar panels going through an MPPT solar controller. Um, that way you can be, be uh, charging just by sitting, charging by driving. Um, it really gets you away from relying on other sources of power. Uh, it allows it to, to run mostly autonomous. This Freedom eGen system is only available as installed equipment in certain manufactured vans. That means my installation is unique and certain decisions had to be made with regard to what went where and why. This was a great opportunity for me to work with the engineers installing my system. My bridge made the best use of that space and proved to be of the correct scale and strength for the job. It's a turnkey system. It's almost plug and play. It did take three days to install it. It's almost plug and play. Now, we're not done here. As I said, uh, this shelf here is temporary. When we got out there, we laid everything out. We have to see what needs to go in this area and I want to be able to work on it after the fact. So I'm going to have a panel here that you remove. No doors. You don't need doors getting in the way. This will be a panel. If you've got to get in here, which it should be rare that you do, tap, the panel comes off, you get it out of the way, you can work. The drawers come out and you can work on all this stuff in here. If you have to go further, we just unbolt the galley and walk it out. It'll be a little heavier at that point because I'll have a Corian countertop and a stainless steel sink, but it can be done. Uh, with two people, not a problem. Okay, let me just rein myself back in over here. What the hell was I saying? Oh, okay, so now this board, I'm going to take all this out and I'm going to refine this shelf. Right now, it's temporary. It's sitting on top of the inverter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a nice piece of wood that relaxes this bend a little more. I'd like a gentle bend right here, gentle bend. So I'm gonna recut the board. I'm gonna cover it with a nice rubber uh, coating so it looks right. And I'm gonna support it on its own bridge coming off of my um, extruded aluminum. So then it won't be resting on the inverter. Uh, one of the things that they were very happy about is the fact that this area is going to get so much ventilation 
because it's not sealed up. I'm not closing it in, as you know. How many times have I said it? Have you ever seen a group of ambitious engineers? Oh, they go at it. I never imagined cable length could be so intoxicating. It doesn't matter. This was a team of highly motivated, highly skilled individuals crawling all over my van. And I'm thankful for it. Now the key with this battery is it's UL listed. UL 1973, which means it's uh, approved for mobile use and storage. Um, not to be confused, a lot of RV battery companies will say they're UL listed, but they fall under a UL listing for cell phone batteries. Come on. This thing has gone through some crazy testing. Um, it is a, a lithium iron phosphate, which is uh, more tolerant of staying at higher voltages for longer periods of time, and it's not nearly as volatile as lithium cobalt, um, which is one of the other chemistries that, that folks use. Uh, the, the UL uh, um, standards uh, require all kinds of testing. We, we, we really abuse the, the battery in um, doing you know, uh, distance drops, um, uh, punctures, and the idea is to make sure that everything is safe. Um, we actually have a test where we take a pneumatic air gun and uh, um, nail the, uh, put a nail in the side of the battery. And yes, it damages the battery, but the idea is that damage isn't going to spread. Uh, we do have uh, proprietary technology that when a, th a cell goes into thermal runaway, which can happen when you puncture, that, that that thermal events stay within that cell. It doesn't transfer from cell to cell to cell to cell and become uh, a, a larger problem. Um, so. You know, if you do have a puncture, think of an accident or something like that, yeah, the battery might not survive, but it's going to protect the, 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 the vehicle, the other uh, parts of the system. Yeah. Uh, we are the only battery that I'm aware of that has a metal enclosure, and that's part of that as well. A nail gun? They shoot a nail gun into this thing. <laughs> okay, it fires up that cell, and then the system contains it. The BMS, the technology in this box, contains that thermal runaway to the one cell. And as Don said, you've trashed the battery, but you're still around to talk about it. So that's my key with this battery compared to all the other systems out there. I think this is the safest system. Look at this. The UL1973. What's everybody talking about? What exactly is this? This is a first for a lithium battery for an RV. The testing they go through, they go through short circuit testing, overcharge testing, over discharge testing, imbalanced charge, failure of thermal stability systems, temperature cycling, Vibration testing, shock testing, drop testing, enclosure test, water exposure, external fire, internal fire. It's a wonder this thing has survived. But that's what I like about it. It's safe. It's the safest battery now available, in my opinion.